The first news story that I'd like to talk about today comes from electric truck startup Rivian. Rivian has officially produced the first customer R1T electric pickup trucks as CEO RJ Scarange mentioned on Twitter. On September 14th, he tweeted the following. After months of building pre-production vehicles, this morning our first customer vehicle drove off our production line in normal. Our team's collective efforts have made this moment possible. Can't wait to get these into the hands of our customers. Also, as a reminder, in case you missed it, the Rivian R1T pickup truck recently got an official EPA range estimate of 314 miles, and the R1S SUV received a 316-mile EPA range estimate, and this is for the standard range battery pack. Rivian is also offering a longer range pack for the R1T truck for an additional $10,000 that should get you over 400 miles of range. Rivian also recently announced in a press release that they have officially started the process of going public and an IPO stock offering now seems imminent. And we don't have all the details yet, nor do we have the valuation that Rivian will be seeking. However, many experts seem to think it could be a valuation around 70 or maybe even $80 million that they may seek with their initial public offering of stock. I'm glad to see Rivian move beyond trial production and prototypes into actual customer production. And it's always good to have another great EV option in the marketplace. And I hope Rivian has a lot of success. For our next news story, as Electrek recently reported, Tesla has started rolling out FSD, full self-driving beta 10.0, to at least one tester in Canada, and there might be others. Over the weekend, as I reported earlier this week, Tesla rolled out version 10 of their full self-driving beta software, and while it's not yet perfect, early testers have demonstrated several key improvements that Tesla has made over the previous versions. This new version 10.0 definitely takes Tesla a step closer to full autonomy. However, as far as I know until now, all the beta testers in this early release program have been in the USA. However, now we know there's at least one tester in Canada, so Tesla is now getting data for Canadian roads through the early release program. It's definitely promising to see that Tesla is now rolling out version 10 of their full self-driving software beyond just the United States into Canada. That's obviously good for the progress of their software. On top of that, Tesla seems to be laying the groundwork to roll out the full self-driving beta in other countries as well. On September 6th, the Tasmanian blog reported the following quote. Tesla has reportedly begun testing FSD beta in Europe, which may hint at a new software rollout there by the end of the year, as CEO Elon Musk had previously hoped. The news is supported by the fact that Tesla has begun recruiting employees to test the advanced driver assistance systems in several European countries, as well as in China and Japan. Moving on to other Tesla news, Inside EVs recently reported, based on a YouTube video that was posted, that the Model Y is a moose test champ. When it comes to what the moose test is, basically it's a test where you set up a series of cones and you maneuver a vehicle swerving through different gaps between those cones to see how well it maneuvers and at various speeds. And apparently the Model Y is a champ when it comes to this test. Here's a quote from that Inside EVs article. Based on the information in the video above, which is from the YouTube channel KM77, the Model Y cleared the cones at 83 kilometers per hour, which is 52 miles per hour. Even though the Model Y is larger, taller, and heavier than the Model 3, its moose test time actually matched the Model 3's record. It's important to note that the same publication KM77 previously tested the Model 3 in the same way. The Model Y already has a very low rollover percentage of just 7.9% according to NHTSA testing and of course as a 5 star crash safety rating from them as well. However, beyond just the 5 star crash ratings which are really important and the low percentage of rollover risk, I think that's really important but I think it's also important that we focus on how well the vehicle maneuvers and this could come in really handy if you encounter a hazardous situation on the road. Being able to maneuver around hazardous objects on the road without losing control of your vehicle 
is a great safety feature and the Model Y seems like it does really well in this department. In our last news story for today, I wanted to talk about Tesla's Gigafactory that they're currently building near Berlin, Germany. This is, of course, really important for the European expansion because the EV market in Europe is very large. But we have some good positive news coming from Germany about Tesla's factory. Tasmanian just reported that, quote, Tesla Giga Berlin gains approval from Brandenburg for 120 million euros in funding for a battery factory. This news, of course, comes right on the tails of what was reported on September 13th by Tobias Lind that Tesla recently received two new building permit approvals from the city of Brandenburg as well. Here is a quote from the official Brandenburg government website. The State Office for the Environment authorizes the early start of construction for rainwater infiltration systems and the modified construction of parts of buildings. A decision on the application could only now be made because a change in the project in the ongoing approval process required renewed public participation. Of course, if you've been following along with Tesla's progress with Gigafactory Berlin and really Gigafactory Texas as well, Tesla is making great progress and both of these factories are really important, as I mentioned, for Tesla's future success because this is where um, the Model Y 2.0 is going to be manufactured initially and, of course, other vehicles as well in the future. But initial production of the Model Y 2.0 at Gigafactory Berlin is going to be really important because, once again, the EV market in Europe is huge and it's really important for Tesla's success. So do let me know in the comments section below what you think about this and some of the other news stories that I've talked about. And I do want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. I would like to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank my Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.